you know the Bible that the last will be the first and the first will be the last. The first thing the Lord will do when he comes back, he will raise the lowly to be exalted and he will make the exalted to be lowly. The rightful place will be given back to his faithful servants. Right now, some of us, we are destined to be high priests. Some of us, we are destined to be chief priests, but we are not in this position. The rightful place will be given back to you. Some of us, you, you are high priests. You are chief priests, but you're not in this position. When the Lord comes back, this place, rightful place will be given back to you. Who is the faithful servant? The faithful servant is the one who do not put God's name together with the world. Who is the faithful servant? It's the one who do not put God's riches together with money. Who is the faithful servant? It's those who do not put God's church together with membership. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Tell your neighbor. This should be your prayer point today. If you want riches, you can still be used by the kingdom of God. But if you want to be perfect, be in the middle. I say if you want to be perfect, you should pray this prayer. But if you do not want to be perfect, well, uh, you can go and seek riches. Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, meaning you can go heaven being imperfect. And you can go to heaven being perfect. I want to be perfect. If you want to be perfect, go. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. And you have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. What is the meaning of selling your possession? Let me define this. Do you want to be perfect? Tell your neighbor. In God's sight, are you perfect? I tell you, God will not see that you are perfect if you are pursuing riches, a millionaire pastor. So this is the meaning of selling your possession. It is in Luke chapter 19, verse 8. Zacchaeus stood up and said, Lord, here I now give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. And the next verse, it says, Jesus said to Zacchaeus, Today salvation has come to this house. Because this man too is the son of Abraham. When I was a baby Christian, when I read that Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, sell all your possession, I was very sad. Does that mean that I could not even have one dollar in my wallet? I said, wow, I'm very sad. I can't even have one dollar in my wallet, sell all my possessions. But then I realized this. Tell your neighbor, the act of Zacchaeus, give half of your possessions to the poor, and if you have cheated anybody, pay back four times. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit in your heart. Do not imitate anybody you see on the internet. If not, just as Moses came out of the Pharisees, you will be a Pharisee, even though Moses is real. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. The best thing that you can know on earth is that the Father has given you authority and that you know that you are going back to God. If you still do not know that the Father has given you authority over this whole earth, meaning you are still a baby Christian, if you still are not convinced that you come from heaven, to this earth and that you are returning back to heaven after you die, it means that you are still a baby Christian. Some of us, we are not convinced that we can see God face to face when we die. It's because the Holy Spirit has not lived through our life to that fullest measure. I told... is <laughs> is always referencing to her. I told my wife that I am... <laughs> I told my wife that no one takes my life um, without me giving it away out of my own free will. Because I know that the Father has given me authority over the whole earth and that I'm returning back to God. So can you see that 
for the Holy Spirit to craft out a sermon to tell us that money and church membership is nothing. It means that the Holy Spirit has really lowered himself down to teach us. We need to know that we are returning back to God. That, that's the main point. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? This is earthly things to tell you that uh, church is, uh, Christianity is not about money or healing. This is earthly things. Okay, one reason I came back to Singapore is because that I find out that I have to prophesy to everybody. Then they believe in me for just one month. And after one month, they don't believe in me already. Because it is only through prophecy, not through God, that they come to me. Everybody I meet in real life, I have to prophesy to each one of them. So I have to come back uh, because I know that this is not what God wants. John chapter 4, Jesus prophesied to the Samaritan woman. Am I right? Jesus only prophesied to that one woman and the whole town believed. But me, I have to go to, I have to prophesy 1,000 times. First time I meet the man, I said, your daughter preached the gospel to you. In that one sentence carries two prophecies because I said that he has a daughter and that the daughter preached the gospel to him. And it turns out to be true. He has a daughter and that the daughter died and now the, the daughter changed his lifestyle because the daughter died. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. Angels are ministering spirits sent from God to help us. Yet their fame is lesser than ours. People come and people go, but the chosen one stay in Christianity. If you begin well, that does not mean that you will end well. Ask yourself this question, what if in three years time, what if you go back to the father? What will you do in this three years time? Some of us will quickly find a living church to seek out the truth. Do so. Some of us will immediately start to preach to people. Do so. Some of us will immediately stop their church and go to a prayer mountain to stay there alone with their disciples for the last three years. Do so. Yet another set of us will isolate themselves and pray to God to do the final last miracles in these three years. So which set are you? If you know that your life has three years left and what your heart wants you to do, do so. Why are we looking at numbers? God created one male and one female and he told them to multiply. God never created one billion male and one billion female. Rather, he created one male, one female and told them to multiply. Jesus Christ only created 12 men and he told them to multiply. Just this meeting, okay, depending on how you see, it could be too big already. King David is a righteous king and he reigned from the border of Egypt to the Euphrates River. So he reigned from the border of Egypt to the Euphrates River. But King Nebuchadnezzar and the other non-Israelite kings, they reigned 10 times more land than King David, if you study the Bible. So just by reading this verse, we'll let you know that conquering land, even though David praised God, is not the ultimate thing that God gave you. Some worldly people, they are not worshippers of God, yet they received healing and money. So when we give testimony, we should not anyhow think that it is God who gave these things to us. Any testimony, we say that this is God that gave it to me. This is God that gave it to me. We are still living in our senses. If a testimony is anything that gives you money increase, or or a good health. What if that thing 
that make you to produce that testimony is not from God. Because even non-believers who do not worship Jesus, they have more money and they have a better health than some who are believers. Rather, testimony is a lifelong testimony. It does not stop at one event. Tell your neighbor, say, the demon of fame. You know, the angel of God right now is looking at this Zoom and the angel of God is saying in his heart, the angel of God is waiting for the pastor to realize that 515 people is, is just a number. It's, it's not real. And if the pastor realizes it, then the angel of God will feed the pastor more information. So one of the reasons why I stopped the thousand people meeting is uh, so that I can focus on the uh, apostles and prophets that Jesus Christ is going to raise up. Because some words cannot be spoken when Judas Iscariot is beside us. I say Jesus Christ can only break the bread after Judas Iscariot leave. There are two kinds of services. One is to preach on the Sermon of the Mount and another sermon is to preach to his 11 inner apostles. In Matthew chapter 5, Sermon on the Mount to thousands of people and another kind of meeting service is preached to his 11 apostles after Judas is carried leave. Do you believe that John the Baptist is a great prophet? John the Baptist is one of the most greatest prophet in the whole of the earth because he has the spirit of Elijah. Even Jesus Christ said, there is no prophet greater than John among those born of women in that day. There were disciples of John the Baptist in those days and there were disciples of Jesus Christ in those days. But being a disciple of John the Baptist does not mean anything until they convert from being a disciple of John the Baptist to a disciple of Jesus Christ. So right now, you are disciples of Reinhard Bonnke. You are disciples of T.B. Joshua. You are disciples of Prophet John. But this will not mean anything in heaven until you convert to become a disciple of Jesus. Because there were disciples of John the Baptist, as you read in the four Gospels. But until they convert and believe that Truly, they have a personal relationship with the Son of God. Then, they mean something in heaven. The only burden you ought to carry as a human being is the burden to expand the kingdom of God. It is God that created you. The only burden you ought to carry is to expand God's kingdom. Any burden that you carry that is not a part of expanding God's kingdom you are living outside of God's kingdom. Do you want to be disciples of John the Baptist or you want to be disciples of Jesus Christ? Of course, when you are disciple of Jesus Christ, you honor John the Baptist. But I'm asking you the question, do you want to be the disciples of Jesus Christ only? When you are truly a disciple of Jesus Christ, you will not fan boy or fan girl over men of God. Ah, wow. No, you will not do that. So when you are truly a disciple of Jesus Christ, you will not be a fan boy or a fan girl of any people, but you will have a personal relationship with God. 